<laughs> oh, out of me, sorry. Hey viewers and YouTubers and people in the community and whether that's contributors or just watchers. How you doing? Um, it's me, Liberty Whispers. Obviously, unless it's an imposter, but it's not. So, let's just clear that up. It is me. <laughs> I think that has kind of just set the tone for how this video is going to go. This is the um, What Interests You tag. Now, I haven't been tagged. I never get tagged. I always have to just kind of jump in and do them and I kind of feel like I'm the dude that just turns up to the party when he hears that there's one going on. I never get an invite but, um, you know, never mind, poor me. <laughs> um, but I just thought, you know, I, uh, I fancy doing it, like I do with all tag videos. I do like a good tag video. <laughs> I'm kind of sleepy, um, so it's maybe not the best time to be doing it, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe you find me being sleepy relaxing. I hope you find it more relaxing than annoying. Um, but yeah, if you've got plans to be somewhere, you might want to put this video on pause. Because I have a funny feeling it's going to be a pretty long one. Um, with it being a one interests me and knowing my tendency to totally talk off topic I mean I'm doing it right now <laughs> so yeah and also don't listen to this if you're operating heavy machinery you know I don't want that on my conscience I love you and I love you all and the last thing I want is an industrial accident on my hands So, if you're sitting comfortably and you're not behind the wheel of a forklift truck or heavy vehicle and you've nowhere to go and you're ready, we'll begin. So, what interests me? Well, as most of you who have seen my videos in the past will know, first and foremost, I guess, is music. I love music. I love every aspect of it. I love it. As a listener, as an audience member, I love it as a writer, somebody who on a daily basis listens to music to write about it. Whether, well, and to, because I love it, but, you know, on a daily basis writes about the music that I love is a better way of saying it, I think. Um, whether it be in little features for bands, little write-ups in new music or posting new music videos or album reviews, you know. I've learned to love music in a different way for that, you know. I've learned to listen to things differently. How to almost deconstruct albums and music and songs and melodies and instrumentation by kind of listening close and writing about music it's kind of helped me to appreciate it in a different light than I had done previously um, I love making music as well I've made music on and off for the last couple of years all different types of genres um, I find it I find it impossible to um, prohibit and restrain myself to one set style or one kind of genre you know I like to experiment with different things and in the past um, you know I've, I've, I've dabbled in different fields of music whether it be like uh, uh, folky, um, acoustic-y singer-songwriter stuff, uh, blues, 
uh, electronica, um, ambience, um, post rock, um, where it would be straight up rock when I've been in bands, or with like the latest stuff that I'm doing, which is more hip hop. You know, I always try and at least have a dabble in different stuff um, that I think I'm capable of. There's, you know, particular genres I wouldn't touch, not because I dislike them, but because I'm just nowhere nearly good enough or even confident enough to even sort of play about in that field. Stuff like classical, for example, or jazz. You know, that's... It's not something I'd love to be able to kind of play in those genres, but I am not quite, I'm not skilled enough at all. Um, but you know, maybe that's something to aim for in the future. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, music is something that interests me. Uh, interests me in terms of just the general feeling and emotion that it puts across, how it makes you feel, how it correlates to. Um, memories, people, places, uh, feelings, moods, um, I love, I love how music can always kind of, can almost be like a photograph, you know, it can kind of be like a photograph in your mind, like how you can remember certain places or people or where you met people or nights, uh, nights out different places or visits to different countries, you know, different snapshots of time and due to music, how music can kind of trigger off memories as if flicking through a photo album. Um, I'm interested in the production side of music. It's something that I have whew, steadily been more and more fascinated in. I mean, it's still very confusing and bamboozling to me and I'm still very much a novice, but it's still definitely something that interests me and it's something that I'd like to get to know more about. Um, and it, it's definitely something I've had fun getting to know about so far. So, yeah, it's definitely something that interests me to a point where I keep wanting to pursue further knowledge of it, I guess, and uh, further practical um, tinkering <laughs> with, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I love collecting music. I recently got rid of all of my CD collection, which I know is kind of, um, a contradiction <laughs> to saying I love collecting music, but I recently got rid of all my CDs, um, I sold them, and I did that because what I'm doing now, is something I've been doing the last couple of months now, is I started collecting um, favourite records and favourite bits of music on vinyl. Um, my collection thus far is very small and very modest, but it's um, it's a one full of my favourites, and that's what I want to do. I don't want to have any any filler in my collection. I just want to be able to skip through everybody. And go, yeah, love it, love it, love that one, love this one. <gasps> And so far, um, that's the case. Uh, my vinyl collection, like I said, is very small, but at the minute it consists of uh, LCD sound systems, debut album, self-titled, um, Bon Iver's self-titled sophomore album from last year, which was my favourite record of 2011, um, The Clash, self-titled debut, um, uh, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, which may be one of my favourite records of all time. I think it's definitely in my top five for certain, my top ten, but it's definitely one of my favourite favourites of all time. Uh, my most recent purchase was In Rainbows by Radiohead, which is my favourite Radiohead album. And I know. A lot of people say, okay, Computer is the best Radiohead album, but in 
my opinion and you know just strictly my opinion I think it's it radio in um in rainbows is is their best work it's also my favorite so I don't know maybe <laughs> maybe I'm biased because it's my favorite but I do think it's their most accomplished record to date so that's my small but modest vinyl collection um and I am looking to keep expanding it uh, I think my next purchase might be uh, What's Going On by Martin Gay, which is just oh, bellissimo so yeah that's music I mean I kind of covered it pretty much um, what else interests me movies which if you listen to my last video you kind of know a little bit about that already um, I've loved movies for as long as I can remember um, and it's just a passion that just keeps growing you know I watched far too many films in my lifetime for what's good for me I mean I watch far too many films each year but it's kind of like my my drug <laughs> um, which isn't too costly and doesn't ruin my life <laughs> I guess um, but yeah, I, I love movies. I love movies again as a, as an audience member, as a voyeur. But I also love the technical aspect of movies, the the sound design, the set design, the cinematography, the editing, the acting performances. I did. I, I studied acting and performing arts. Uh, I studied uh, drama at school. Uh, the English or the, the British equivalent of, of a qualification over here which is called GCSE so I did GCSE drama and then I did uh, another qualification but in performing arts in uh, the qualification standards which are called A levels um, and that was like a combination of music, drama and, and dance which was enjoyable, you know, I must admit, dance does interest me. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, that I did actually enjoy that aspect just as much. But with performing arts, I think that's kind of where uh, my creativity really kind of got a huge boost. Because we were, for like, um, coursework and marked assignments and stuff, we were marked on performances that we would have to write from scratch and piece together ourselves and perform and a lot of those performances had to involve music so I got to do a lot of score work in terms of not orchestral score but in terms of like um, musical fittings for the performances and I got to write uh, scripts and screenplays and stuff for that so that kind of really helped encourage my interest in um, how productions are put together um, in particular the writing process you know I've always loved writing that's something that interests me greatly and that's something that I'm going to be putting more of myself into uh, in the near future and I'm going to hopefully be putting some short stories up on this channel as well I have a few ideas I just need to sort of flesh them out um, but yeah that's something I'm kind of looking forward to and something that you can expect in the near future at some point but um yeah, I, I just I love I love movies as a, a viewer and as somebody who who's kind of I, I originally, when I went to to university, I went to study uh, film and TV production, but I ended up flunking my first year because um, girls <laughs> and um, practical practicality um, within the course or lack of practicality we had one practical course and the rest was theory and I wouldn't mind if it was actual filled with TV production theory but it was all international politics and world affairs and stuff that like 
back in school I wasn't interested then but if I redid the course now I would lap it up I would love that kind of thing it's just back then when I was younger I just didn't care for it and kind of ended up flunking it so I didn't end up doing that course I ended up doing advertising creative media and design management which is much more poncy and pompous and posher than it sounds a lot of peas there um, but I did contemplate going back to doing film editing and it's something that I still may do you know um, who knows it's, it's something I'm definitely still interested in massively um, so much to the point where if you listen to my last video you'll have heard me talk about this thing we're doing called the film club <gasps> where each week I would pick a film and then we go away and watch it obviously and then come back and talk about it on the next week's podcast episode and this week we did Alien um, which you can hear the episode now if you're interested just go to the other video or ask me for the link and I'll put it in there but we did Alien this week and next week um, for my pick uh, I picked um, Darren Aronofsky's Requiem for a Dream which is a hard and brutal watch but just a spectacular film um, in terms of movies and stuff that I like movies and directors and, and things in that sense that interest me I'm a huge Quentin Tarantino film, um, fan, <laughs> fan, fan, <laughs> I'm not a huge Quentin Tarantino film, that would be a bit strange, but I'm a, f a huge fan of his, and he's definitely one of the, di the directors, directors, <laughs> I'm sorry I can't speak tonight, directors that really kind of turned me on to, uh, scriptwriting in a sense, because of his own conventional structure, and his non-linear storytelling, uh, but he kind of definitely helped open up my interests into the practicalities of making films. Uh, other people like like uh, Martin Scorsese, Darren Aronofsky, I just mentioned, uh, David Fincher, uh, Woody Allen, um, Jim Jarmusch, um, Judy Delpy, uh, Miranda July. Oh, uh, David Cronenberg, massive fan of Cronenberg. Um, I kind of like a good number of Clint Eastwood directed films. I found myself liking more of his stuff over the last couple of years. Um, Cohen Brothers, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, Kevin Smith, a bunch of people. I could just go on naming directors and what have you um, for ages, but I won't. Uh, in a similar way, with movies and films, uh, I'm interested in TV. Not as much as I used to be, because I don't know. I just I feel it's a medium that is getting stronger again. <laughs> But for me, it was something that I just did a whole bunch of interest in for for the longest time. But um, I'm a fan of um, anything, pretty much anything that's on either AMC or HBO. Uh, Breaking Bad, I love. Um, I just finished Game of Thrones season two. Watched the finale today. I loved that. I was a little bit late on that. Um, in fact, I only just kind of started watching it about five weeks ago. But I can't wait up for Lost Time, but I really like that show. Um, let me think. Uh, Lost, Arrested Development Community, uh, The Wire is my all time favourite TV show, and I don't think it can ever be topped. I think people may do reasonably good efforts, and I think. Uh, shows like Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones do stand out as truly excellent shows, but oh goodness, um, 
for me, The Wire will just always be the best TV show. I just I think it's it, it's just untouchable in so many ways. I love that show, and if you've never seen it and you're looking for something new to watch in terms of TV, I would go with The Wire. Um, I just think it's incredible. It's just so incredibly written. Just so much uh, philosophy and theoretical concepts behind the writing characters. In fact, if you want to check something out for The Wire, this is something I do almost as a litmus test and a sample of of like how much I love this show is if you look for uh, the wire chess scene uh, where D'Angelo Barksdale is in the pit and he's playing chess with I can't remember who but he's playing a game of chess or he's teaching two uh, two kids how to play chess and just just the dialogue and, and the <laughs> the philosophy behind what he's saying can be applied not only to the show but to pretty much anything. It just sticks to anything and it just rings so true and it's so authentic and it just oh, it's amazing. I could talk I could do a whole video on the wire, but yeah. Uh I can't recommend the wire enough. Um obviously if you've seen whew, the video I did about my bookshelf, you'll know that I'm into comics, huge, hugely into comics, um, as a big nerd, um, favourites would be Spidey, because that's pretty much what got me into comics as a kid, um, the first time round, before I kind of took a huge hiatus from it, um, Spidey will always have a soft spot in my heart, oh, Batman, obviously, um, Green Lantern, um, you know, if you've only seen the movie, please don't change Green Lantern just on the movie, uh, go check out, um, go check out Jeff John's Secret Origin, if you want a kind of decent telling of what that film should have been, um, uh, Viva La Data, uh, Swamp Thing, anything Alan Moore, basically, um, Nightwing, uh, all sorts, <laughs> all sorts really, um, anything by Garth Ennis, in particular Preacher, um, Neil Gaybird, uh, George Ruby of Judy's artwork, just, I could talk about comics endlessly, but, yeah, um, yeah, if you want to kind of get an idea of some of the stuff I've got on my bookshelf, uh, go check out my bookshelf video, obviously it's pretty easy to find. Um, I think it's like episode, I think, mean, sorry, episode video 79, so, yeah. Uh, you'll also see that, if you go see that video, you'll see that you'll also know that I, I'm interested in collectibles. I like strange things, I like action figures that always stay in the box. Um, I've got, uh, Frank the Bunny from Donnie Darko, Quentin Tarantino, action figure. Um, a Wally one, because I love Wally. In fact, the day I graduated, I went to see Wally straight after. Um, I hadn't seen it yet, and I was dying to see it, so I just thought, nah, forget everything else. Everything else can wait. Let's go watch Wally. Um, what else have I got in terms of collectibles? So, Toki Doki stuff. Uh, all kinds. I like collectibles. I think they're nice, and I think when I eventually get a house of my own, like a house house of my own, uh, I want to have one room just dedicated to collectibles and paraphernalia, almost like a little museum room, like a showcase room. Maybe even just have like a games room, which doubles up. It's like a collectibles showcase room. I think that'd be pretty cool. Just to have some big glass cabinets to keep stuff in. I think that would rock. Um, speaking of which, video games. Hugely interested in video games. Again, like comics, I kind of took a break for a couple of years where they just didn't interest me. And I kind of fell out of love with the medium, but then I kind of got sucked back in. And since then, I've kind of been. 
um, hugely fascinated and interested and entertained by games. <coughs> um, I used to have all next-gen consoles, but I sold my PS3 um, simply because I just wasn't using it. Um, but I don't really use my Wii either, to be honest. Um, but I do use my 360 a lot. I would like to get into PC gaming, but I just don't have a powerful enough PC. Uh, I am interested in maybe trying out some um, online um, MMOs or MMORPGs. If anybody knows of any decent ones to try, or any ones that they play and would recommend, that would be cool. Um, if that's the case, let me know in the comments. Because um, I'm kind of looking to maybe dabble in that a little bit, but yeah, um, I've loved, I've loved games ever since my friend down at the end of the street when I was a kid had an Atari, and I would go over and we would play, and it's so weird, because people of a certain age will know what I'm talking about, but games used to come on huge discs at the time, like huge floppy discs, um, so it's been kind of nice to see the evolution of games. That's something that's interesting to me, at least. Um, a big part of why I like games is because of the storytelling. Um, I think a game has to have a decent story, unless it's just something to pick up and play, like a casual game, but um, in general if I'm playing something that has any kind of story, to it, I want the story to be good, I want it to be solid, and I want to have characters I care about, or characters I find fascinating. I just recently finished Max Payne 3, and that's easily one of the best narratives I've ever seen in a game. Um, just everything about it, from the observations to the sort of film noir style um, monologues, to the actual script of the story, you know, it's simple, but it's concise, um, and it allows for not just this development within the story, but it allows for big set pieces as well, you know, it is like a smartly written action film that you get to play, um, so I was really impressed with that, and if you're looking for something to play that's very fun and cool and well written and engaging, I would, um, I would definitely recommend Max Payne for you. Um, but yeah, a part, another part of why I like games is because of the actual visual designs, the way they look, you know. As well as having a good story, a game really needs to look good to keep your attention in terms of visuals, in, case, in terms of visual stimulation. Um, so I like a lot of art design uh, in games in comics, that's one of the draws to comics, is the art design, um, but it kind of expands out of that as well, you know, um, I just like, I like um, art, and de art and design, which is something I actually studied at school, but at the time I had no interest and it was just basically a cruise course, where I just felt like I could do it and just cruise by and get a good grade, but not the case at all, and I kind of wish I had that interest for it now, back then, um, and then, you know, maybe I would have, I don't know, led into doing something more with that, um, but yeah, design and art is definitely something that interests me, um, that's why there is... There's a number of YouTube users and there's a number of people in the community that kind of have a, uh, an almost artistic sense to them, which um, if really interests me. Um, Sariana, uh, 1001, uh, she seems to have like a real nice, a, a real good sense of artist, <laughs> artistic tendencies. Like, if you watch her videos, you'll see that, you'll see paintings in the background and stuff, and if you watch her last one, she just ordered a really, really cool Emerald Aqua print, which I thought was awesome. Um, and of course, you know, she has a 
sort of artistic tendencies for tattoos. Sorry, my mic cut out there, um, so <laughs> apologies for having that little abrupt um, cut, but uh, what was I saying? I was on about Sariana's uh, tattoos, yeah, which if you've noticed, you know, uh, a few um, people in the community have really nice tattoos, which is something else that I'm really interested in. I don't have any myself at the minute, but I do want some, but I want to design them myself. Um, but yeah, I dig her tattoos, I dig um, Queen of Serene's tattoos as well. Um, that's another person who seems to have kind of uh, an artistic sense to them, which I like. Um, who else am I thinking of? <laughs> I can't think in a minute. Um, Aid Renee, oh, I can't even speak. Um, Adrenalia. I think is how you pronounce her name. She's another person who is actually really good at art and if you go and check out um, her videos, I'll put links to people who I've mentioned in the description below, but she she's someone else who has really interesting uh, art and design tendencies and uh, it, it really is shown in a lot of her videos. Um, so yeah, that's another reason I, I like the community is it seems a very artistic place. Um, and even though I can't, I can, I can, you know, sketch and <laughs> and doodle, uh, but I I don't think I can draw. I'd love to draw. It's the one thing I'd love to be able to do. Um, and you know, maybe it's something that if I put some more time and effort into it, something I could gradually improve. But you know, it's I think with certain things like that, you kind of born with a flair for it uh, and you can teach yourself to do anything to a pretty decent standard but I think um, some people are just born with a, with a flair for the exceptional um, and I wish I had that that would be awesome but yeah tattoos I, they interest me I think uh, and it, it's, again it's another form of design and it's a form of design on the human body and I think that's beautiful um, and at one point you know, I would like to get some of my own, but as I say, I'd like to design them myself so that it has uh, more meaning and it's something that I've created to put on myself. <coughs> um, goodness, this is a long video. <laughs> um, if this is boring, I hope I apologise. Um, I just hope it's putting people to sleep <laughs> so it serves some kind of purpose. Um, Let's see what else interests me. I find it's weird because I find a lot of stuff that interests me is stuff that I wish interested me when I was younger. Like I said, I wish I was more interested in art and design when I was younger, when I was actually at school studying stuff. You know, studying these things <laughs> that I'm interested in now but I had no interest in back then. Stuff like history, I find history incredibly fascinating now. Uh, history and uh, geography in terms of the natural earth and uh, science, you know, astronomy, I find all of that so fascinating and so bewildering and it's just, it's so humbling, you know, you look at nature and you look at space and you look at the universe and it is all just, and it's incredibly fascinating how it all is fit together and how it works and you know, <laughs> it's amazing, you know, it's kind of mind-blowing when you take time to think about it and kind of appreciate it. Um, but I only just wish I had that appreciation when I was younger. Um, because I find it, I find it just so ultimately fascinating and I find it so, I find it wonderful. I think there's such a sense of wonderment in, in stuff like natural earth and, um, geology and, geography and astronomy and, and history, you know, I find cultural history really interesting, um, uh, like Egyptian history or African history, um, even European history, you know, is, is, is fascinating, um, and I just kind of wish I had that, that kind of interest when I was younger, um, especially within science. I find science so much more interesting now than I ever did. I used to hate science 
when I was a kid. I really didn't like school in general, I think. Um, but I find science really interesting now. Um, I like science fact and I like science um, fiction and I like science ambiguity um, in stuff like uh, supernatural stuff, you know. Um, UFOs and cryptozoology and unexplained stuff. I mean, I don't necessarily believe everything, you know, I need to. I'm kind of a level-headed person, you know. I like to have um, things presented to me, but I like to kind of mull things over. And, you know, some things I will kind of um, have a leniency towards believing. Some things are just utter rubbish. Um, but it fascinates me nonetheless, you know, um, I just, I, I, I find it very, I find it very interesting whether, it, whether all this stuff is true or not, whether, you know, supernatural stuff or unexplained stuff is, is, is true or not, you know, like UFOs or Bigfoot or, uh, different mythical creatures and, well, not so much mythical creatures, but like cryptozoology stuff. Um, there's a podcast which I listen to weekly called Mysterious Universe, which kind of covers all of this sort of stuff. Um, and again, they do it with a very balanced mind, you know. They're very analytical. They bring in stuff, you know. And again, it's just stuff that interests them. It's not a case of like 100% conviction in that this is true. It cannot be disproved. This is definitely true, you know. Aliens are controlling our brains with their mind lasers. It's no, it's nothing like that. It's a lot of reportings, a lot of sightings, a lot of research. Um, I just generally find it really interesting and fascinating. You know, I find the fact that there is potentially, possibly, maybe a whole galaxy, a whole realm of stuff that we have no idea about find that incredibly fascinating um, and it's it's a wonderful thing you know I do believe in extraterrestrial life forms I don't think it's little green men or perhaps flying saucers but I think there is different kinds of organic life out there I think there has to be I think it's kind of arrogant to presume that humans are the humans and animals and all the life forms on Earth are the only life forms in the galaxy, considering the huge mass of what's out there. Um, but nonetheless, I digress. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I like all of those things and more. I like bears as well. <laughs> as anybody who might know me might already know, I love bears. I think bears are wonderful, wonderful creatures. Um, for many different reasons, you know, they can be very bold, and they can be very strong and stubborn, <laughs> like myself, um, they can be fierce, and then they can also be afraid, you know, they can be very individual creatures, or they can be very pack-orientated, I think there's so many different dimensions to bears, and I generally think they are a fascinating creature, um, and I just think they're, they're lovely and adorable. Obviously, you know, I'd be wary if I was near a bear. But I think there's just something very majestic about them. Um, and if I was an animal, I would be a bear. The bear's rule. Um, but yeah, those are just a few things that interest me. I mean, I could go on for much longer, but um, I think I've gone on long enough. Hopefully you found this reasonably interesting um if not hopefully you're asleep and it's done something of you I don't know oh but yeah so there you go I hope you liked it if you didn't sorry and um I hope it was boring enough for you to go to sleep too but um yeah there you go that's uh, a bunch of stuff that interests me. What interests you? I'm going to tag everybody. If you're watching this, consider yourself tagged. Because I like watching these. I've had fun watching these this week. And I'd love to see some more 
Um, I'm going to tag everybody, but I'm going to tag in particular Whisper Admirer because I miss him. I miss his videos, and I don't know why he's not making them anymore. But if you're listening, brother, you are sorely missed, and consider yourself tagged. <laughs>